I ain't gonna lie, the tension and suspense and just overall this eerie feeling at the end of this chapter of My Hero Academia had me on edge. Cause you gotta think, Hawks right now, he's under surveillance, the league is watching his every move, so if he slips up, it'll be a wrap for him and his whole cover will be blown. So when he's there with the book in hand, trying to talk to Endeavor and trying to drop him a hint without being obvious at all, Ooh, baby, this is going to be a test of how wise and how much he could pick up on clues Endeavor is. But also just like, I, I ain't going to lie, I was like, oh boy. Like, yo, don't slip, don't slip. Let's talk about it. Whether Facebook, Twitter, or the two, make sure to steer clear because I'm coming through like... Okay, so the chapter picks up from where the last one left off. Endeavor is basically darting to the scene of the crime of what was going on with that old bearded dude. And Deku, Bakugo, and Todoroki are trying to keep up. But it shows just how freaking fast this dude is. When Deku described it and said like, yo, it was like he was gone before we even heard the shockwave of, you know, him bouncing. And you can see that how long it took them to catch up and grab the old dude by that alley or hit the thugs, shall I say not the old dude by that alley like endeavor is really really quick so when we get to the power scaling and you know his speed and all that that definitely um i don't remember endeavor being that quick so i don't know if he's had that ability to be that quick all this time or whatever but it just shows that endeavor has leveled up or his speed is on another level because like the fact that he was able to like basically almost vanish in front of them that quick that's freaking crazy and it just shows that Endeavor is number one for a reason and this chapter honestly showed just seeing the cops appreciating Endeavor for the changes he's made the fact that there was no casualties at the end of all this it just shows that Endeavor despite you know you could feel whatever yeah he comes across as hateful in a way and you know he's done some things in the past he's really done a lot of things to clean up his act like the fact that the town is appreciating him and everything slowly but surely even though all might has been out of the picture and a lot of people were skeptical like oh all might is gone he was a symbol of hope and justice and endeavor really didn't feel like you know what i'm saying like he's starting to quickly create a name and a legacy for himself as a number one hero and not just the you know replacement or the number two that went number one instead of becoming number one on his own merits and that's freaking awesome because a lot of people especially the fandom i've, I've seen just so much hate for endeavor like there's no redeeming and i guess that's where we at with can Cancel culture, not trying to jump completely off topic or whatever, but like, man made mistakes in his past, that means forever and ever you gotta hate him, and no, like, that's not how life works. And then we see a lot of the people in the offices talking about the old man with the beard, which really makes me wonder what the heck made this man do this, because they're like, hey, ain't that old servant of the stars dude from like 2nd Street, what the heck is he doing? And another guy is like, oh man, it's too early for this type of shit, like, what's going on here? So. I'm wondering, like, why would he just dart into immediately, not anger, but basically, like, I gotta save everyone. Is it that he's just playing crazy? I don't think Horikoshi's gonna just throw this red herring in for nothing because it was a quote, uh, one of the last things that the old bearded guy said that really made me wonder something. And I don't think it was necessarily directed at the person everyone thought it was. I could be off or whatnot. But that's something right there. I was like, wait a minute. Why would he just, if he's somebody that, oh, he's just a regular or whatever, and now he's just darting in there, and we found out what his quirk was, basically he could like absorb glass, that was freaking, I ain't gonna lie, that was uh, unique to say the least, how he's just absorbing the glass off the windows and creates this giant glass ball, which... Okay, <laughs> yo, little deadly there. Not too much, just a smidge. He says, Earth is on the verge of destruction, darkness, and he'll destroy the source. Now, I'm wondering, because Endeavor was pretty far from this, right? But Hawks was in the vicinity as well. Who was this dude talking about? That's one of the things that this chapter really made me curious and question. This old bearded dude, which, I, what was his name mentioned? Anyway, you gotta wonder, Okay, if he's talking about this, you know, dark thing was like Shigaraki in the area, was he actually referring to Endeavor? Because again, after a certain point in the chapter, he's like, that guy with his light is going to bring darkness. Let me go. Like, <laughs> a part of me couldn't help but kind of chuckle. Like, yo, this looks so bad. Like, he just straight up looks like a crazy old man. But what's the quote? Within insanity, there's a smidge of the truth. So who knows? One of the things, I'll just throw it out right now. I think possibly he was talking about Hawks. Because even though Hawks is doubling or tripling or whatever the heck he's doing as an agent, there's a possibility whatever Hawks has done, 
he's already set the wheels into motion for some really bad things to happen or he will set the wheels into motion for things to happen because he got to keep his cover going as long as possible and if the league decides you know what bro you got to do this and it could start some really nasty stuff so maybe this old wizard dude was trying to stop hawks or trying to come at hawks because hawks was in the vicinity it was endeavor hawks and of course, you know, the three kids and whatnot. We don't know again if anybody else, if any of the league members were around there, but I think he was talking about Hawks. That's just me. And of course, before he could do anything, you know, Endeavor shows up with his flash fire fist and blows a glass up, which I'm like, thankfully there was nobody down there. Everybody seemingly got away because if you think about it, this is giant shards of glass probably would have sliced everyone as the glass bubble exploded so even though there's no casualties I, I guess there was nobody down there and everyone ran away like uh, eh, it, it's not a big deal but it was I guess kind of convenient and then when he tries to dip out on Endeavor after Endeavor's like yo you, you had the balls to do this on my watch fam like that's what makes again th this chapter just continues to show the difference between you know and it's perception a lot of it of how people can be viewed but we don't necessarily need only one perception for the symbol of justice or the number one hero so to speak because at the end of the day all might was more so just benevolent in every way a smile with everything and Dever is just like a hard ass that gets the job done no matter what and the way he approaches things is like yo you had the audacity to do this while I'm patrolling are you crazy and again it just shows that this is the legacy that he's trying to leave behind of no BS, I wasn't taking it, I'm taking you down. And it felt so old school, but like, I don't know, I, I don't really think that was going to work when, you know, the wizard is basically going through the alley and he has a bunch of thugs ready to bop Endeavor, and of course the three show up, as well as Hawks, which maybe Endeavor might have some trouble, like if they would hit him with a bat as he's going that fast, maybe they could have knocked him out or something. So, at the same time, it shows that Endeavor's not completely bulletproof so to speak because again if they would have jumped him right there hit him as he's moving fast it would have been a wrap for him but also hawks was in the scene and the, the little conversation with bakugo like bakugo it, it's perfect honestly i think bakugo would be the perfect sidekick for Endeavor hands down because like he got the attitude he got the ain't nobody better than me when Hawks was you know at the end of all this he's like hey let's just be clear I was here first okay I got there before you fam like that that's Endeavor he's an Endeavor junior that should be Endeavor's child I'm just saying like what was Bakugo's mom no let me stop and then again the, the quote that I mentioned earlier. That man is the source of darkness. That light he emits shall summon the darkness and our demise along with it. And we see a panel right under it of Endeavor. But I'm not convinced that that was who he was talking about. Being honest with you. Again, it could be. It could be that Endeavor does something so dastardly on accident. His power just, he loses control. Or in the midst of trying to take someone down, he causes a lot of destruction or something like that or he could have been talking about hawks because hawks is in a dangerous situation and he's rolling with this group the imperial whatever the heck i still can't remember their name like i, I i'm so just tempted to stick with calling them the league you know what i'm saying like it, it's not the exact name the league of villains but i'm just gonna stick with the league because it's easier to remember but very very mysterious and what made this man have this call to action to jump into this one seemingly he was a regular dude that was just like you know uh, around the way everyone knew for him to go from that to yeah i'm gonna just become a criminal and hire some thugs to try and jump endeavor like what the heck and is it just me or poor deku like you know with everything he's done and he shows up because you know you got to still remember deku is still that nerd that loves heroes so much so when he sees hawks he's like oh my god it's hawks the number two hero and he's like hey aren't you that kid that blew up his fingers like it must hurt deku like as much as he loves these guys like oh so that's what I'm remembered as, the kid that blew up his finger. It's like, what? And again, this chapter just showed that uh, Endeavor's really making a name for himself. No casualties. The cops is like, oh, man, you always do it. Making the job for the cops a lot easier. So Endeavor's making his way, which I don't want to keep on harping on that because I've already mentioned it. But it was nice to see that Endeavor's not just being like, because it would have been at a certain point like, oh, damn. So they never going to trust Endeavor? Are they always going to be scared of Endeavor? Are they not really going to mess with Endeavor ever, the people? And little by little, he's changing the perspective of everyone. And then we get a little bit of conversation that Sukuyomi is with Hawks' sidekick. Because obviously, if Hawks is on this mission, he has no time at all to do some type of internship. So Sukuyomi is not probably getting the proper training or what he would like to be able to learn from the internship. Because again, he's with the sidekick and wherever the heck their, their you know, office is or whatever. So uh, Sukuyomi probably is a little disappointed. Like, damn. I got the sidekick like what and this is where it gets a little interesting or very interesting shall i say because hawks pulls out the paranormal liberation book and the only reason i know the name now is because i read it from my notes 
But when he pulls it out and he's like, hey man, you know, the ideals that this Destro dude has is so amazing and everything. This could go really left because if Endeavor doesn't catch on to what Hawks is trying to do here and trying to drop him some subliminals, which Endeavor's a hothead. I don't see Endeavor to be like this master detective on some Batman type of deal. So if he doesn't figure it out and quickly of what Hawks is trying to tell him, he could take this the total wrong way and be like, wait, you idolizing a, a weirdo? You idolizing this guy that had these crazy ideals? You like, you believe in that? So this is a very, very fine line because this could also blow Hawks' cover. Like if Endeavor is like, Yo, what's wrong with you? Like, you, yo, you I or something like that? It could go left. He could uh, report this back and be like, yo, uh, Hawks is, is potentially going to be a traitor or something like that. So very, very fine line that Hawks is walking right there. Personally, I think my prediction is next chapter, uh, Endeavor's not going to be able to figure it out, but maybe it'll be passed off as like a laughing joke. He'll be like, whatever, dude, I don't really care. I got some shit to do and then move on with this. So I don't think Endeavor's going to be able to pick up on it. I could be wrong, but... I, I think he just, he looked too clueless when Hawks was trying to, you know, drop the subliminal hints like, yeah, you know, I'm really messing with this book. But also, I mean, I get it. It's a, it's a really uh, tense situation because Hawks can't blow his cover, but he wants to try and give some type of hint out on what's going on to Endeavor. And the fact that Endeavor was linking back one of the things that Hawks said of, hey, man, you know, I would love to have some free time and be able to do whatever heroes deserve it. And then the fact that he said that this book would give us all the free time in the world. Again, Hawks could take it like, so you want to follow a crazy guy's ideals or some whack jobs ideals to get that free time. Like you, you might be a traitor. So a misunderstanding could be underway for this whole situation. Overall, the chapter, it was an OK chapter. I want to say it was like a uh, seven maybe something like that it was pretty intense in the end with you know hawk speaking with endeavor or whatever but it was basically like some weirdo i think if anything this is a foreshadowing of whatever's to come whether he was referring to endeavor or he was referring to hawks somebody potentially is going to do some real big damage to either the city or something where they won't be able to control themselves or again he could be talking that hawks being on this mission is going to start something that even he doesn't realize and it was also dope to see how much of a change endeavors made he's freaking like a bullet fast like real crazy fast but also that people are starting to respect him and he's making a name for himself in his own right opposed to just filling the shoes that all might left behind and i'm curious what you guys think like what made that wizard dude jump into action to do this to begin with like did he send something he kept talking about the stars is telling me this and that and earth is in trouble the darkness is coming like what was he referring to or could it be that hawks really is not on the hero side or he's on a third thing maybe the reason why he's pushing that paranormal book despite like the way the narrative is approaching it like he's trying to get him to see the light it could be that he's a tri agent so to speak and he's actually really rolling with Reed Destro and he truly believes this and your overall thoughts and expectation for my hero academia moving forward uh again good chapter moving things forward it seems as though again whenever endeavor shows up the manga gets real hype the action be really dope like he almost got jumped in an alley like that that's just <laughs> but that's all i have for this one though thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of my other social media links of course in the description below i'm for never world and as always people have an awesome day and remember Remember the golden rule, anime and manga for life, boy. Have an awesome day. Peace in. Enjoy the next ride, but I was the best ride.